we have gathered together today in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate not to be entered into lightly. Sam Winslow, do you take Lisa Compton for your lawful wife to have to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do you part? I do. Lisa Compton, do you take Sam Winslow for your lawful husband to have to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do you part? I do. The ring, With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss them. in so many ways. His strength. His smile. The way you talk about him, I feel as if I know him already. <clears throat> Is there anything else I can get for you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's all. Thank you. One for the scrapbook. I thought you hated pictures. Only of myself. Well, there's not a camera on Earth that could capture your beauty anyway. I was going to wait until later, but... Oh! Oh, Sam, I don't believe it! Oh, it's... Help me put it on. Couldn't be more. Well, perfect. Oh. oh, I love it. And since we're giving gifts, it's my favorite brandy. <laughs> it's to replace the one we drank at our engagement party. Where did you find it? At a wine auction last week. Surprise. This calls for a toast. Mm. To my darling, to us, to this moment we've waited for.
There's something wrong with this. What's happening? It's easier if you just relax. Go with it. What are you talking about? Operator? Yes, can I help you? Hold all our calls, would you please? Yes, ma'am. It's our wedding day and we don't want to be disturbed. Everything has to be perfect. Acute cyanide poisoning. Oh. Food, possibly drink. I'll know more when I get the lab report. No fingerprints in the room. Everything's been wiped clean. Not a lead. What's the FBI interest in this case? Winslow's death fits a pattern. Successful businessman, beautiful wife who's a widow by morning. Widow no one can find. I thought serial killing was strictly male territory. Not anymore. What have you got on her? Not much. Five murders in the past 10 years. We don't even know what she looks like. She's a different woman with each guy. She's a real chameleon. Transforms herself into whatever the guy wants. Then kills, moves on before anyone even knows she's gone. The funny thing is, everyone we've interviewed says she's the nicest person they've ever met. The big question is why and how she chooses her victims. I'll be with you in a moment. No rush. Can I help you find something? Oh, no, thank you. I'm, I'm just waiting for some books that I ordered. Oh, you know, I thought I'd seen you in here before. Really? Mm. You work here? Uh, sort of. I own the place. Don McAndrews. Well, then you must know the stock. Five stores and growing. If I don't have it, it hasn't been written. Name it. It's, um, it's a new cookbook I, I read about. Regional French cooking. And I don't remember the title. My Little Corner of Provence. Yes. <laughs> but that's amazing. Miss Crandall. Yeah, well, not amazing enough. It's new, it's popular, it's gone. But, you know, we can order you a copy if you like. Here you go. Everything you've always wanted to know about 19th century Russia. Wonderful. Well, heavy reading. It's research. I write romance novels. And the next one's about a, a dark and powerful czar and the peasant girl that cost him his kingdom. Mm. Those darn peasant girls. Those darn czars. So you'll, uh, you'll find my cookbook? We'll track it down like a hunted animal. How primitive. So once we bag this errant book, how do we find you, Miss, uh... Harriet has me on file. Thanks for your help. Linda Crandall. That's the kind of woman you should be going out with.
Mr. Uh, McCann? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't usually just drop by like this, but Harriet didn't have your telephone number, just your address, and uh, oh. I know you're not going to believe this, but I was in the neighborhood. <laughs> and it sounds like such a line, but it's the truth. Yeah, I, just, I got this. Oh, you found it. Yeah, I was at one of my other stores, and I thought maybe you needed it for dinner tonight or something. Oh, well, I appreciate it, but my uh, my stove isn't working. Oh. Uh. Well, I'll see you around the store then sometime, huh? Absolutely. Oh, um... I was just thinking, with your stove broken at all, I mean, if you didn't have plans for dinner, I could take you out for a nice meal to a, a good restaurant that I know downtown. Well, I... No. Uh, well, I, I... I just need a clean up. If, if you tell me where, I could meet you there. If, if that's all right with you. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. How about the brasserie at 8 o'clock? You're on. Well, I hope I'm not too late. I, I didn't know what to wear. <clears throat> Something wrong? You look beautiful. Oh, well, I, I, I don't. But thank you, anyway. Thank you. <sighs> this is lovely. Would you like some wine? Yes, please. I looked your name up today. I, I wanted to see what you'd written. Uh... And you didn't find Linda Crandall listed? No. Well, that's because I, I use a, a number of pseudonyms. I plan to be a serious novelist one day, and I'd hate to have the ghost of pulp romance haunting me for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, so what you're telling me, that I have to guess which ones are yours. I'm telling you that you must have much better ways of spending your time off. Well, I do read a lot. Occupational hazard. My son takes up much of my time, too. Oh, you have a son? <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> How old is he? Bobby, he's 16. He's a great kid. Do you have children? Um, I've been close to marriage once or twice. Never worked out. Never met the right man, I guess. <laughs> Story of my life. Strange. Our life was so perfect. And then. Phew. I know the feeling. Sorry if I seem a little awkward tonight. I'm out of practice. I haven't dated very much. I'm flattered you asked me. Well, then, is there any chance that I might see you again sometime? this I think it's a phone number you're so stupid right too pushy and he noticed he won't call why should he ugly I love to cook. I haven't made dinner for anyone in a long time. Uh, Does your son like artichokes? I don't worry about what he likes. I want you to fix what you want. I think we might need a few more of these. <laughs> That's a lot of food. How many am I cooking for? Well, it's you, me, Bobby, and Bobby's girlfriend, Sally. He has a girlfriend? Yeah. How sweet. Then there's my wife's sister, Betty. She lives with us. Oh? Yeah, since Margaret's death, Betty's just been sort of a housekeeper. Um, 
a surrogate mother for Bobby. Sounds like you're lucky to have her. Oh, yeah. So, that makes five for dinner. No problem. Oh, I might just need another packet of rice. Would you? Sure. Would you, I'll just go find the cherries for my special dessert. Okay. You're gonna be sorry when I get you home. Stop it, do you hear me? Don't you ever listen to me? How stupid have you been? No, you bet you'll be good. Again. You bet you'll be good. Do you, you ever, ever do that to a child? This is not your problem. You're right. It's your problem. If I so much as see you touch her again, I'll find you. And I'll make you more sorry than you could ever imagine. Anything wrong? No, not now. See you again sometime. Who's that with Dawn? Must be her. She's pretty. She's very pretty. See you later. like to call it home. I designed it myself. Do you like it? What's not to like? Mm. That's Margaret. She's very pretty. Such a beautiful smile. Thought you could use an extra hand. You must be Linda. You must be Betty. Don, I forgot the cherries. Oh, well, I'll run back to the store. Oh, I hate to ask, but there's no dessert without them. No, no it'll just take a minute. Uh, go ahead. It'll give us a chance to talk about you behind your back. Uh-oh, now I'm getting worried. <laughs> you should be. Mm. <laughs> Bobby was supposed to have cleaned up these dishes. <laughs> well, I'm going to make a mess anyway. A few more dishes won't hurt. I love that bracelet. Really? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. So Don tells me you're writing a Russian romance novel. Anna Karenina is one of my favorites. I like her work, too. Well, who was younger, you or your sister? I am. Don must have loved her very much. Everybody loved her, especially Don. When she died, part of him went with her. Hey. Hey. I saw Dad up front. Where's he going? Do you think you could take a breath and say hello to our guest? Sorry. Hi, I'm Bob. Hi, I'm Linda. And you like biking. How'd you know? That giveaway, right? <laughs> Why didn't you do the dishes? I got busy. Take a shower before dinner and put your dirty clothes in the laundry for a change. He's been going through some hard times, too, I'm afraid. She was incredible. Most everyone thought that Sam was the luckiest man in the world. A girl like that? Well, most everyone, Professor Jenner. What was your impression of her? Something about her, something, something odd, almost eerie. She had this, well, this way about her, like she had to win everyone over to her side, desperate to please. And, she could walk in a room, judge the mood of the place, just, just like that. Oh, I brought you a picture of her. Uh, don't get your hopes up. Not much. Yeah. She hated that I took that photo. <laughs> Aside from the hair and eye color, did you notice any distinguishing marks, anything that might help us identify this woman? I did notice some scratches one time. Scratches? Uh, marks, you know, on her arm. Little lines, like shallow cuts here and, and here. I, I don't know what that meant, if, if anything. I can't believe anyone really cooks like this. <laughs> it's sure not what we're used to. I wanted it to be special. Um, you sure you wouldn't like some wine, Betty? No, I'm fine with mineral water, thanks. Oh, please, I'd hate to see this go to waste. I said no. Thank you. <laughs> the 
There you go. So, what do you think? <laughs> She's nice. Very nice, Don. I hope you all save room for dessert. Whoa, somebody called the fire department. <laughs> no need to panic, Bob. His cherry's jubilee. Looks great. Bravo. You'll have some, won't you, Betty? The alcohol burns off, you know. <laughs> there we go. That's amazing. That's great. Mm. Well, good night. Would you like to come in? No, I should really be getting back home. Uh... One drink. Come on. Okay. Um, do you mind if I slipped into something a bit more comfortable? No. Please, slip. You can pour yourself a drink. The bar's over there. It's just a rough draft. You weren't supposed to look at it. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's not that. It's just uh, when you said that you were going to be slipping into something more comfortable, I thought that... I think I've seen too many bad movies. Huh? Well, I uh, hope I haven't disappointed you. No. Not in the least. I don't trust her. Who? Linda. Don't ask me why. It's just a feeling I have. She's just not what she seems to be. Well, sooner or later, he was going to meet somebody and do that. Hey, that's not the issue. This woman is supposed to be a writer, and she didn't know that Anna Karenina is a novel. Not a novelist. <laughs> 
she writes romances, ain't exactly literature. <sighs> Don didn't come home last night, did he? You think I'm being silly? No, but you're not exactly being realistic either. Don's a big boy. He's going to pick his own friends. Not a whole lot you can do about that. What are you doing to me? I could ask you the same question. Yeah, I was afraid that I would never feel this way about anyone ever again. Come on. Where are we going? Upstairs. Are you sure? Betty. Hi, Betty. No, he's not here, but I'm expecting him soon. Can I take a message? <laughs> okay. Dinner, 8 o'clock. Won't take no for an answer. <laughs> okay. I'll see he gets it. Right. Okay. Bye-bye. How's that book of yours coming? Oh, still researching. Oh, I can't wait to read it. Tell me it has a happy ending. Oh, there's always a happy ending. <laughs> While I, uh, while I remember it, I think I left a silk scarf in Don's office last time I was here. Would you look for it? Sure, no problem. a surprise for dinner tonight. Can you come over straight after work? Well, that sounds good, but I think I should go home first. Say hello to Bobby, change my clothes. You could uh, shower here, call Bob. Be easier. Besides, it's, it's getting late. And I can't wait that long to see you. Has anybody ever said no to you? Never twice. Uh, I didn't see your name on the reservation list. It's under Crandall. Oh. Uh, Linda Crandall, Paula Martinson. Hello. So uh, how long's it been? Five months? Six? Well, I've been busy, that's all. You look terrific. 
<laughs> so do you. Don. Our table. Oh, of course. Right this way. Well, you two enjoy yourselves. I'll check back later to see how you're doing. This is one of my favorite men. She's pretty, Dawn. You date her? Ah, uh, we saw each other a couple of times. That's all. There's nothing serious. Oh, you don't have to explain yourself to me. Are you hungry? Famished. This place is known for its seafood. They catch most of their fish locally. I love to fish. My father taught me fly fishing. Have you ever tried it? It's one of my favorite things in all the world. Really? I had no idea. You know, there's some of the best fishing in the country. It's just right around here. We should try it sometime. I'd love that. How was everything? It was delicious. We can't wait to come back here. Great. How would you like some liqueur on the house? For old time's sake. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> This is awful. I'm sorry. I, I'll take care of it. I put some water on this. Oh, excuse me. I am so embarrassed. Oh, it was just an accident. I'm going to go see if she's okay. Careful, you ruin the fabric. I'll let you send that to the cleaners first thing in the morning and send me the bill. No argument. Warm water's the best for this kind of <laughs> You've done enough already. Now I'm warning you. Stay away from me and stay away from Dom. <gasps> Walk you in. No, no, that's all right. I'll call you tomorrow. This is one night I'm glad to see you. Yeah, will we stay while you lock up? No, that's okay. I'll be fine. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Another day, another dollar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> night, Paula. Good night. Bobby? What's with the dining room? You two have a party last night? Just for you. And Betty cooked all day. No way. Nobody told me. What, we have to have an appointment now? Is it about Linda? No, it's not about Linda. It's about us, Dad. You're never here anymore. But I care for her, Bobby, and I'm thinking of marrying her. We could be a family again. Would you like that? Sure, Dad. Betty, I'm sorry about the dinner last night. I honestly didn't know a thing about it. 
Just wanted to make something nice. Yeah. It's been a long time since we've all been together. Well, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, okay? I think we better clear the air about Linda. I'm I don't want to talk about Linda. You know, when it comes to Linda, I don't really give a damn what you do about her. You know, I used to work child abuse in L.A. Something tells me our lady's as much a victim as the men she kills. No. Please, William, please, no psycho babble. What we need is fingerprints, a name, something. I'm trying to put together a better picture than the one we got. What do we hear about this woman? She's sensitive. Everybody likes her. She becomes exactly the woman all of her victims are looking for. Fine, so what does that tell us? Pure speculation. As a kid, she was abused, beat up, molested, maybe even raped. Maybe her father raped her. Maybe her father abandoned her mother. Maybe her mother was a prostitute, an alcoholic, possibly. Maybe her mother was abused. You know, these things are very often generational. So the kid has no control as a child, but as an adult, is taking it back in space? Right. Great. And we got five men dead. Great. I told you would show up sooner or later. Well, good morning. Where have you been? Uh, <clears throat> well, it's a secret. Well, you know, I hate secrets. So what have you got in your pocket? Tell me. Uh, OK, but uh, not here. Over here. In this box is the key to my future, the key to my happiness. For me? You've given me hope again. You've reminded me that there's more to life than ledgers and year-end statements. There's something much more important than all of that. There's love. Marry me. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to throw you the biggest engagement party this town has ever seen. Oh. <laughs> oh, I get it. I love it. And I love you. Looking glass. Hi, Harry. It's Betty. Hi, Betty. Is Don there? I owe him an apology, and it can't wait. It might have to. He's busy now. He just proposed to Linda in the romance section. Isn't it wonderful? Uh, could you have him call me when he gets a chance? Sure, I will. Talk to you. Bye. Caters are coming by this afternoon to talk about the party. Uh-huh. You're going to be home, or do you want me to handle it? Um, well... Oh, my God. Linda! I'll see you right there. Thank you. Linda, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. George, this is Linda, my beautiful intended. Hello. You know, something I've always said about Don, he has great taste in jewelry and in women. <laughs> Thank you. It's kind of you to say that. 
Uh, George is an old fishing buddy of mine. You know, Linda tells me she's quite the fly fisherman herself, so we're gonna go out to the East River tomorrow, see so we can catch her. Anybody wanna dance, George? Sounds like my cue. He He's a doctor, you said? Yes, he's a pediatrician. He's a good guy. Karen's been after him ever since her divorce. Mm. What happened here, sweetie? Oh, nothing. No, what is uh, it? Cat. Neighborhood cat. That's what I get for trying to be friendly. <laughs> well, maybe George should take a look at this. Bob is looking kind of lost. <laughs> you excuse me. Sure. I know this isn't really your kind of music, but would you like to try and dance with me? Uh, no, I, this is not, I'm not good at this kind of thing. <laughs> well, I don't believe that for a minute. Well, come on, try. Try. Watch the punch, I hear it's lethal. Really? Oh, I didn't know. Don told me about the mix-up with your dinner. I'm sorry, I really did write the message down. Just got up and walked away by itself. You don't believe me, ask Linda. She was right there when you called. Oh? Can you excuse me? So, what do you think about me being your stepmother? I never want to replace your mother, you know. But I love your father, and I think you're pretty terrific yourself. How about we forget all this stepmother stuff? You and I could just be friends. It's a deal. Mind if I uh, cut in here? Yes, sure. <laughs> He's a terrific kid. Oh. <laughs> Are you having a good time? This is the best engagement party I ever had. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Besides, any time I get to spend with you is wonderful. Mm. Mm. You know, I was thinking, what would you uh, think about maybe moving in, living together? Hmm? You know I'd love that. But I don't want to do anything to hurt Betty. She's been so good to you and to me. Yeah. Well, sooner or later, we're going to have to deal with it. Mm. Quiet, everybody! Quiet! It's speech time! What's Tonight's this? a very special night. It's our cake. Yes, tonight, we all get to meet Linda Crandall, who baked this cake, by the way. Linda's very handy in the kitchen. In fact, she's pretty handy everywhere. Smile. Oh. <laughs> Don't be shy. Let's put your hands together. Say hello to Linda. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Don. Who needs the extra pounds? Oh, then I'm sorry. Oh. Well, that's all right, Ma. These things happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what got into me last night. It wasn't intentional. You believe me, don't you? This is all happening so fast. Look, Betty, we're all trying to adjust. And when you're drinking, you're just not making it any easier. See you tonight.
<laughs> if I didn't know any better, I'd say you'd never been fly fishing before. I guess it's been longer than I thought. I just can't seem to get the rhythm. Well, you have to keep your wrist stiff and your forearm straight. That. Oh, no. I seem to have lost the fly. Here. Where's your ring? Oh, I, uh, I left it at home. I didn't want to lose it. I, I'll put it on when I get back. Could, could you tie this for me? Sure. My father always used to tie flies for me. He loved to baby me. He was a great man. You know, it's amazing. You remind me of him in so many ways. Not too many ways, I hope. And you're ready to go. Let's see it one more time now. Thank you. Okay. Great. You got one. <laughs> there you go. Got him? Oh. <laughs> oh. He's a big one. <laughs> Here you go. You're welcome to use the shower if you want to clean up before dinner, honey. Well, I might take you up on that. <laughs> oh, Don, I, I seem to rip my shirt sometime today. I, do you have a needle and thread in the house? Yeah, I think Betty's got a sewing basket somewhere. I'll see if I can find it. My hero. Don't you forget it. My ring. Mm -mm. I found it in Betty's sewing basket. Do you want to tell me what's going on? I don't know. I I noticed it was missing this morning. I, I never take it off, but I, I I must have maybe when I was helping clear up last night. I I looked everywhere for it, and I couldn't find it. Oh, Don. Oh, I've been sick worrying about how I was going to tell you that the ring was lost. Well, it's not lost, is it? You're home so soon. How'd it go? I'm not accusing you of stealing anything. Well, I don't know how the ring got in here. Linda says that she took it off last night when she was cleaning up. Now, maybe you just happened to pick it up off the kitchen sink, put it inside of your sewing kit for safekeeping. That's all I'm saying. And forgot about it? Give me a break. This isn't really about the ring at all, is it? Things are getting a little crowded around here, in case you hadn't noticed. Just make it all easier on everybody and get a place of my own. I don't want you to do that, Betty. You're a part of this family. Oh, I'll still be part of the family. I just won't live here anymore. What do you think about that? It settles it, I guess. Don told me you decided to move. I'm sorry you feel that way. You sure? Well, it, it won't be the same around here without you. Oh, I'm sure you'll manage. I've seen such pain in your eyes lately. 
I never wanted to hurt anyone. And I know it's been difficult for you having me around, given your feelings for Dawn. But I hope in the future that that won't stop you from visiting any time you want. They may not see through you, but I do. You got what you wanted. I'm warning you. I'm watching every move you make. I'm sorry. the last of it. So where's this place? Is it nice? It's furnished, I hope. I'll be okay, Bobby. I hate to see you leave. I'm really gonna miss you. Oh, sweetie. Your mother would have been so proud of you. I'm only a phone call away. We'll see a lot of each other. I promise you. Zit. Take it out to the car. I'll meet you there. Get the rest of your stuff. Anyone home? Dear Don and Bobby, this is a very sad time for me, and what I'm doing is very difficult, but I think it's best for all of us. I'm sorry for any trouble or any pain I might have caused you. You won't have to worry about me interfering any longer. I love you both. Betty. Linda? What are you doing, sweetie? Oh, Miss Betty. The house just seems so empty without her. Excuse me. Whoa, 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 hold on a minute. Where are you going? I thought I'd get a few kilometers in before uh, school. Well, what about your math homework? Linda and I have been working on it. I spoke to his teacher, and she said if he keeps up like this, he's going to pass with flying colors. See? With my race coming up, I wanted to be sure. Your race? The 23rd. The 23rd. I can't make it. I'm opening up a new store, son. I... Dad, do you know that I, I won my last race? Do you even care? Bobby, look, why do you... Hun? I'll see what I can do, son. I'm sure your dad will try to be there, won't you, Don? I will. And I'll be there for sure. Right at the finish line, okay? Thanks, Linda. See you later, Dad. Great today. Everybody ready? Let's go.
Our lead story, the wedding night killer. She woos him, marries him, poisons him on their wedding night, as vicious as the female praying mantis who kills her mate after having sex. The body of Sam Winslow, prominent attorney and victim of cyanide poisoning, was found in his honeymoon suite the day after his marriage. FBI agent William Johnson has told Armed and Dangerous Winslow's bride, a woman calling herself Lisa Compton, is also wanted for questioning in no less than four other poisoning deaths across the country. We're here with Agent Johnson at the scene of Sam Winslow's murder. What can you tell us about the suspect, Lisa Compton? She's turned up in every part of the country, from New York to California, traveling in circles of power and money. From the time she targets a victim till she actually kills, this is an extremely dangerous lady. Thanks to Agent Johnson, Armed and Dangerous has obtained a photo of the woman in question. As you can see, there's not much to go on. But if you have seen this woman or know her whereabouts, call our toll-free number, 800-555-2444. Your tip may be the one to help stop her. Coming up next, a Midwest Police Department has been implicated in the death of a narcotics agent killed under the... While I have your dad's car, I think I'll go back home and pick up a few more things. All right. I won't be long. See you guys later. It was great you came to the race today. Yeah, she's pretty cool.
hate you for it. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Oh, Betty. Is your father here? It's important. No, it's not. Are you all right? You seem weird. We gotta talk. I'm telling you, I saw her. She's the wedding night killer. You said you couldn't see her face. I saw enough. I always knew there was something wrong with her. I had no idea how bad it was. And Betty, you've been drinking. I have not. I can smell it. This is not about my drinking. This has nothing to do with me. My whole life is falling apart here. I can't take it anymore. This is not about me. This is about her. This is who she is. This is the truth. Look at this. Five wedding rings. One for each dead husband. These were Linda's? And I saw the bracelet. What bracelet? The bracelet, the bracelet she was wearing on the show. Aunt Betty, you're not making any sense. You've got to tell your father. You've got to get him alone and show him these rings and tell him what I said, okay? Why don't you tell him? I can't. He won't believe me. Please, I'm counting on you, Bobby. Where are the rings, Betty? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Stay away from me. I saw you at my house, Betty. I know you have them. I don't. You don't? Well, we'll find out soon enough. Thank God, where have you been? I had to go back to the house, pick up a few things. Well, I called your house about two hours ago. There wasn't any answer. Well, I went for a drive. Uh -oh. Don? Hmm? Don, I've been thinking. Yeah? Let's not wait. Let's get married tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, we can't possibly pull a wedding together by then. Oh, I, I don't need a big church wedding. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I love you and you love me, and that's all that matters, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be impulsive. It'd be so romantic. Oh, come on. It's crazy, sweetie. It's... I know. I know it's crazy, but please, please, I want it so much. <laughs> you want it? It's yours. Tomorrow. Oh. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
This is a view of the cabin as you're approaching it from the main road. It's a couple of miles from a little town called Jordan's Ferry. Sounds like heaven. <laughs> hmm. How would you like to spend our honeymoon there? Bobby, you're never going to guess what we're going to do. We're going to get married today. What do you think? Today? I've got plans. Oh, well, we understand. You don't have to change them. Oh, yes, you do. You're going to be my best man. What about Aunt Betty? Does she know about this? I don't know, Bobby. That might not be a good idea. Oh, she should be part of this. I'll call her right away. It's today. You're serious? Yeah. I've already called Reverend Mike in the chapel at Jordan's Ferry. He's going to perform the ceremony this afternoon. I'm going to fly up this morning and open up the cabin. Then you and Aunt Betty can drive up later with Linda. There's no answer. Uh, we'll have to try her again later. I hope we can catch her. Bobby, I'll make you a deal. You come up with us, and I'll fly you and Aunt Betty home tonight, huh? That's perfect. Right after the ceremony. Yeah, sure. I can get into this. <laughs> well, listen, the uh, airport shuttle's gonna be here very soon. I think I should go get myself ready. What's the matter, Bob? Uh, nothing. I'm fine. I'm excited. I, I just want to talk to my dad. Hey, buddy. Um, Dad, listen, I want to talk to you real quick. Uh-huh. Aunt Betty came over last night. I think she'd been drinking. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. She was acting crazy. She said a lot of crazy, crazy things. How about? About Linda. But Dad, I didn't believe her, but she wanted me to tell you, so... Bobby, you have to understand something about your Aunt Betty. She isn't taking this too well. She's been jealous of Linda since the first night I brought her into the house. And if she's drinking again, I'm sorry to hear it. But Dad, Dad don't you want to know what she said? Doc? Okay, what did she say? Yeah. Excuse me, but what are you going to wear for the wedding? Uh, suit and tie. Oh, would you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Could you wear the gray one? It would go perfectly with what I have planned. <laughs> sure. And we're going to have to find something for you to wear, too. Something really nice. Mm. Good. Well, that's about it. I'm on my way. Jeff. Huh? You sure you have everything? As long as I have you, I have everything. You have a safe trip. Bobby knows the way. You listen, Dad. We'll talk later. Drive carefully. Ah. Mm. 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 Take good care of her, son. We don't want to lose her now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Johnson here. This is Marty Pratt with the Armed and Dangerous Show. Got a call yesterday. May or may not be a lead on Lisa Compton. Woman called. Wouldn't say who she was, but she was quick to give us some guy's name and address. Said Compton's living with him. What makes you think she was telling the truth? She said she has a collection of gold wedding bands. Five of them. Thanks. We got something. Lots of pictures and we'll save us some wedding cake. Come on, you follow this way. Nobody here. So what now? Let's get something to eat. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Uh, 
If you're looking for Don McAndrews, he isn't home. I think we ought to talk to this lady. Yeah. Excuse me. You a friend of Mr. McAndrews? Uh, who wants to know? FBI. I'm Agent Johnson. This is Agent Broderick. Now, you were saying about Mr. McAndrews? Well, um, an airport limousine picked him up this morning at about 10 o'clock. Do you have any idea where he was going? No. Well, can you tell us if he's living with someone? Well, his son, Bobby. And his fiance, Linda, she moved in with him a while back. Will you describe her for us? Oh, she's a uh, brunette, gorgeous. She seemed nice enough. She and Bobby left about an hour, hour and a half ago. Can you tell us anything else about this woman? You know, I really think you should be talking to Betty. And who's Betty? It's his sister-in-law. Uh, his first wife died and she was taking care of them until he met Linda. You know, Betty said that she didn't trust her. She might have been the one that called. Yeah. You know, I've been trying to reach her all day, but she hasn't answered. She usually calls. Is something wrong? When I was a little girl, my father used to take me on picnics during the summer. But he's a tuna. <laughs> Sally told me they're your favorite. Great, I'm starving. You know, we're not too far from Jordan's Ferry. When we're finished, we should probably get going. I mean, looks like it could be snowing through the pass. I know. I was just feeling a little tired, and I thought the fresh air might do us both some good. I hear your father taught you how to fish. Is he still alive? I hope not. I thought you loved your father. I hated him. He was a bastard. He left me and my mom when I was just a kid. You know, my mom said it was all my fault, that I'd driven him away. Can you imagine that? Making a child feel responsible for something like that. <clears throat> What's wrong? It's gone bad. <coughs> I don't know how. I only made him a couple of hours ago. Here, try another. No. My stomach's really upset. I better get some stuff in the car. You're just eating too fast. Just give it some time. Nice photos, aren't they? <coughs> you would have loved them all. <coughs> Lovely man. <coughs> it's easier if you just relax and go with it. <coughs> Beautiful boy, Bob. So lucky to have a father that loves you so much. He'll never disappoint you now. You'll always remember him this way. It's my gift to you. Perfect memories. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Let's check the bag.
this? You were wrong, Mother. Dad didn't leave because of me. He left because he's a man. That's what they do. Make you love them. And they hurt you. And they leave. They all did that, Mother. took a noon flight to a little place up north called Jordan's Ferry. Trouble is, no one up there has ever heard of McAndrews. There's a lot of little small towns in the area. Used to be a big hunting and fishing spot till the damn developers came. What's the driving distance? Four and a half, maybe five hours. So the woman and the kid could be driving up there to meet them. There's something else. You were right about the suicide. No such thing. She was dead before the razor blade hit her wrists. The coroner says with a blunt instrument. In five hours, there's no telling what she could do. I want a police helicopter, I want it now. You get on the phone, call the Jordan's Ferry Police and tell them what's up. Somebody up there's gotta know where McAndrews is headed. Let's go. Linda, where's Bobby? Bad news, I'm afraid. After you left, Sally came by for a bike ride, and there was an accident. What? Is he hurt? Sally was sideswiped by a car. She broke her leg. Oh, no. They're keeping her in the hospital overnight. Bobby didn't want to leave her. I wanted to postpone, but he said he didn't want us to change our plans, and I hated leaving him alone, but I had no way to reach you. He insisted. This, I take it, is the bride? Uh, yes, this is the bride. Are you sure he's okay? Don, he's fine. Let's go. Repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed.
by the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Mr. and Mrs. Don McAndrews. Hmm. How about one of you? You know, I still don't have a single picture of my new bride. Oh, no, later. Right now, it's cake and champagne. I'm a stickler for tradition. Here's a little tradition I'm kind of fond of myself. Oh. First things first. My thoughts, exactly. This has to be perfect. Trust me, it'll be perfect. No, Don, not yet. All right, okay, I give up. What do you want? Just some cake and champagne. Is that too much to ask? No. I'm sorry, I... I, I guess I'm kind of nervous. After all, I don't celebrate like this every day. Why don't you make the toast? Here's to the woman who saved my life by saying yes. You're my favorite, you know. <coughs> You're the most wonderful man I've ever known. Well, I'm glad to hear that, considering you just agreed to spend the next 30 or 40 years with me. Don't drink the champagne. Bobby, I thought... It's poison. It's trying to kill us. There's nothing wrong with this champagne. Look. Bobby, you, you're supposed to be at home. What about Sally? What about the accident? What accident? Yeah, she's a killer. She put something in my sandwich. That's what Aunt Betty tried to tell us. She kills guys on her wedding night. He's lying. Then what's he doing here? And what was all that about a hospital? Answer me, Linda. Answer me! Where's Betty? He's lying! He's lying! He's lying! Oh. Oh. Stay away from me! Stay away from me! Stay away from me! Don't you touch me! Stay away! Linda, put the knife down. Stay away! Put it down! She's crazy! Linda, what are you doing? Linda, what are you doing? It's poison. Really love you, Miss Paul. <laughs> 